Okay. Now we are no. live. Ah, here we are. Thank you, everyone. Um, now can you hear us? Anyone? We have 20 people here in the chat, in the chat. Okay. Kitty has yeah. refreshed her browser us. and now she can hear. Yay. Thank you, you everyone, for your patience this morning as we iron out a little technical difficulties. Um, I am Danica from Publish Drive, and we are happy to have you here today with our webinar uh, with Mark Recklau. And uh, Mark and I were chatting just a moment ago that uh, we really appreciate everyone and their patience with some of the timing issues. Uh, it is very early in the morning for me because I'm in the United States in Colorado. And Mark, he is, I don't know, where are you in Hungary now, Mark? I am in Hungary. I am next to the Lake Balaton, the Hungarian Sea. Yes, there we go. I love it. that. Oh, it's got to be beautiful where you're at. So it yeah, is, so it is. It's late afternoon where Mark is right now. And then our second session, it will be afternoon for me and it will be his bedtime. So um, we're, we're working with these time differences just to make sure that everyone gets a chance to hear this wonderful message. So thank you all for being here. And I'm going to share just the uh, brief introduction of Mark so you get a little bit of a taste of what we're going to talk about today. Mark Recklau is the author of 13 books, including the international bestsellers, 30 Days Change Your Habits, Change Your Life, Love Yourself First, and How to Become a People Magnet. His books have reached more than 1 million readers and have been translated into more than 15 languages including Spanish, German, Japanese, Thai, Indonesian, Chinese, Portuguese, Russian, and Korean. He wrote his first book, 30 Days, in 2014, after being fired from his job and literally went from jobless to Amazon bestseller, which is the title of his second book. Mark's mission is to empower people to create the life they want and to give them the resources and tools to make it happen. His message is simple. Many people want to change things in their lives, but few are willing to do a simple set of exercises constantly over a period of time. You can plan and create success and happiness in your life by installing habits that support you on the way to your goals. Mark is also a satisfied Publish Drive customer, and he's been taking advantage of our tools to make his publishing journey simpler and more effective. So as you can see, we have a really great person to come talk to us today. Uh, Kitty is mentioned that she loves listening to you, Mark, and she's listening oh, from thanks. Sweden. Oh, and I she, Sweden. she mentioned uh, that she enjoyed your presentation, SPS Live. And for those of you who missed it, you are definitely in for a treat listening to Mark today because he's got an incredible story. And we are so happy to have you here today, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. So uh, my first question for you is, I talked a little bit in the intro about how you became a best-selling author. Could you tell us a little bit about your journey to being a best-selling author? Yeah, but that's a long story. I'll, I'll make it as short as possible. No, it was, I was fired from my job in, back in 2013. And I had a life coaching training done. So I had savings and everything. So I knew I have two years my savings were like lasting for two years and I got some government help. So I knew in two years I can do something. I wanted to become a coach. And I always also wanted to write a book because a coach with a book distinguishes always from a coach without a book. So during my coaching training, uh, I learned a lot of exercises that work when you do them. But most people don't do them. And as I was jobless, I didn't have my best excuse ever, which is I don't have time because I had all the time of the world. And I just started doing these exercises. And while I was doing them, I noticed, wow, this really works, like writing down your goals, practicing gratitude and all of that. So the idea of the book in my head started to grow. So in March 2014, I sat down and and planned what was going to be my first book. And then I sat down and wrote it. And it's actually that, that simple, right? So I didn't wait for 
permission from anybody. I just thought, well, let's do it, write a book. I had studied a lot about it and I knew, well, once I have the draft finished, I can give it to an editor, which are great professionals and they will make it better. So I didn't have to worry about my mistakes in my language or whatever. So I think that's the, the basic thing is just to sit down, start writing. So my, I wrote 2000 words a day or three hours. That was like my thing, whatever I reached first. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so I started at six o'clock in the morning and then until nine. And then also research. I was doing research while I was writing. So that also came in. So sometimes maybe I was only writing 1000 words and did two hours of research and then came to my three hours and like that. Pretty quickly, because my first book has 40,000 words, uh, pretty quickly, like 20, 25 days, I had the first draft written. And then it's a, something that also works at my advantage. I'm not a perfectionist. So for me, it was clear. I just read it once or twice. I don't edit when I read it, because again, that's the, that's the job of the editor. Of course, I try to make it as nice as, it, as I can, you know, like to don't give too much work to the editor. But I know I noticed that many people uh, never become writers because they just rewrite the same draft 25 times and never publish it. And I didn't want this to happen to me. So I read it twice, gave it to the editor. When I gave it to the editor, I didn't even know the title yet. I had no idea. It just like a working title was like self-help book, my self-help book. But I knew the editor will now on it, be on it for two uh Two weeks so then i will have the time two weeks to think about a title and i went very met method methodological or well with a system with a process so i i wrote down like 20 possible titles and 20 possible subtitles and then with time i knew it will come to me and it came to me and then it was 30 days oh, that's which great. came yeah which came to me it was fantastic in um i was um in a restaurant in Ibiza with my best friend, my roommate for many years. And we were having a great paella there. And I was, I was washing my hands downstairs. And suddenly it said, wow, 30 days. I was like, wow, that, that sounds good. That's a catchy title. So I had a title. And then of all my list of possible titles or subtitles, change your habits, change your life, stand out. Because that's actually the thing. You change your life by changing your habits. Mm, I by love changing that. little things, yeah, by ch changing little things. And that's how it came out. So then I had my title, then I published it on Amazon. I think Publish Drive wasn't there then, or at least I didn't know about you. That was 2014. And then six months, nothing happened because one thing is writing the book. And then the challenge was selling the book, which is actually what makes you have the money to eat and pay the rent. So then I had to figure that out. And that took also some time. And then, so what I want to say is, and I talked, we talked it before. It's always like, you know, everybody who writes a book thinks it takes off in the first week and you will sell a million books in the first week. And then everybody gets like sad when it doesn't happen, but it <laughs> hardly ever happens. It hardly yeah, ever happens. Uh, so six months, nothing happened. I, I sold maybe 200 ebooks in the first half year and I want those who listen to us to take this as a motivation that I know even if you only sell 200 ebooks in the first half year and even in January 2015 I sold eight ebooks eight in the whole month which was normally a point where you say okay maybe I have to look for a job maybe the dream about writing and doesn't become true but I, I kept to it and one of the uh, important habits what we surely talk about later is also the, the habit of persistence of believing in, in yourself and not giving up for at least two to five years <laughs> right and that's how you build it so that was the story about the first book and then I got the book pub deal which is a great promo for the English speaking world and that started off my career, career. I got 40,000 downloads so just before getting uh, giving up I said like try it one more time try it one more time then I got the book pub deal and I got, I think, 40,000 free downloads in three days. But those free downloads, the way Amazon was eight years ago, they put you very up high in the bestseller rankings. And then when it turned to paid, you were actually selling books. And then I suddenly I was, so I was giving away 40,000 for free. And suddenly I was selling 80, 90 books a day. 
Oh, wow. And that was a nice sum of money that that was the first time I could live from my books. And then I got two more book bub deals and it it went on like this. I I sold, uh, I wrote a couple of more books, but then the book bub deals stopped and then I was going down again. And maybe that's the story. Then the second revival, we talk uh -huh. about it a little bit. We take it a little bit more in a couple of yeah. minutes or so. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, so I have a question here from GH who asked if your launch coincided with the Atomic Habits release. No, no. I was much before. I, I wrote my book in 2014. So James Clear wrote a fantastic book. Uh, but And I'm glad he wrote about habits because people get more access to habits. But a mm -hmm. lot of us who were, who were writing about habits, we were like, oh, this James Clear because he got a book contract and he sold, sold 5 million, I think, already. But the good thing is in personal development, as I have seen from my readers, you will never just buy one book on habits. So actually everybody is winning That's because true. there are people who probably have had James Clear's book, which is amazing, but then they buy two or three more books on habits just to, to get some more opinions maybe or some more twists. So for us, actually, those who write about habits, it was a good thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell me, what were the, some of the biggest challenges you encountered in your early career and how did you overcome them? You talked a little bit about not getting any sales. Um, what were some of those other challenges you faced? Exactly. The first one was not getting any sales. And then, of course, rejection. I've been rejected by every uh, literary agent in Spain because, of course, I wrote to all of them. I've been rejected by publisher. I have been, uh, uh, how you say, rid ridiculed by publishers. Oh. Who told me, yeah, who told me in the faces that they said like, yeah, you are a self-published, so your book can be that good. And thank wow. God I was already a little bit, yeah, I already had sell, sold 10,000 books at that time. And then I just told the publisher, how many of your authors have sold 10,000 books? And yeah, then there was absolutely. silence because no of their authors have sold 10,000 books. So that was okay. But the great thing is I'm, I'm super grateful for that because everything that I created now for me, my lifestyle, my earnings, uh, I couldn't have done with a publisher. So I'm a failed author for publishers. So I have one book with a publisher and every year when I get the, the, the Excel with the sales, I, I want to cry because mostly it's probably what I sell in one or two days with Amazon or with Apple and Publish Drive. And, and they didn't want three more books of me. So I had to offer them more books of me. And I said, no, thanks. We don't want them. And thank God I have the emails because those books that were rejected have now sold over hundred thousand copies, which they again would not have done yeah. uh, with the publisher. So I'm, to them. yeah, I'm, I'm really a big advocate of self-publishing. I think the times are changing. I, for the authors, I know that making a living with their books, um, hundred percent are self-published authors, and I know, and of the authors I know that are not making a lot of money, they are published. So I mean, that's just my personal experience, but I'm, I think there's something to it. You know, there's a, a pattern or something to it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I love so, that. Um, so, now, we talked. You talked a little bit about the success of Thirty Days Change Your Habits, Change Your Life, um, and and you did a little bit about the. Um, personal coaching development that you did. Can you share with us a little more of that inspiration behind the book and how you approach the process of creating that idea into a book? Yeah, it's just, it was for me so mind boggling to see that those things work, you know? And then, mm -hmm. so I never wrote down my goals, but I started writing down my goals in 2013 when I was jobless. Um, I wrote down some impossible goals at a 10 year, uh, distance and I reach them. It's amazing. The power of goal setting, gratitude. I'm practicing gratitude. We can talk a little bit also towards the end about gratitude. So for me, when I was in developing the book, the in Spanish, this, the, in Spain, I lived in Spain at the time. And the usual conversation in the supermarket market queue was, well, how are you? Well, everything is shit, but maybe this Friday I win the lottery and then everything will be fine. And I am when I thought, I, I saw it and I thought like, guys, really, I mean, and you know, the working title of 
I wanted first to call 30 days. I wanted to call it 101 things you can do while you're waiting to win the lottery. Because, I like that. <laughs> That's the great. Thing is, and yeah, and the thing is, and I'm, we find it out more and more and more. Also, thanks to people like James Clear. We always think that success will happen to us like that, that, that. It's like one event. So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, nothing happened. And then this one fantastic event will happen. The book deal where we sell, sell a, a million books or this and that. And real life is has nothing to do with it. Real life is I work every day, boom, 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 boom. And then someday it takes off. And this day can come after three years or after five years or after seven years. But we, have, we do this habit. So we do every day. We write 2,000 words a day. Or we do the gratitude every day. Or we write out our goals. So I have goals, daily goals. I have monthly goals. I have five-year goals. I have 10-year goals. Oh, wow. But two things. One of it, the goals can change. And it's more like on a highway, you know. It's not like literally this goal I have to reach like this. It's like, no, it's, it's a sign for me in the future, which I would like to reach but it can change but it yeah. gives me direction it gives me a direction right and then i have daily goals and the daily goals are those who make you every day mm -hmm. uh, i write 2000 words that i when i write now i'm not doing it because i got a little bit lazy but that's another story we come towards the end uh, but i do my gratitude i walk an hour every day i do my goals and all of that and with time, consistency, persistency, this develops in, in something. And the only thing is, so I always like to say the only difference between a successful person and a not successful person is the successful person hung in a little bit longer. Because yeah. you never know where you are in the process of getting your big chance. But the thing is, you work for it. It's not just happening. And if you do right. these small incremental improvements, automatically it builds up. And I was always convinced that if you do something for eight hours a day during two or three years, you will be good at it. So, for example, I don't play golf, but I'm pretty sure that if I would play golf four hours a day from today on in the next three years, in three years, I will be a pretty good golf player because also, and I'm not talented because also, The genius and talent is overrated. It mm -hmm. all comes down to work, work more and work harder than the others. And that's it. And if you do something for so many hours a day, you will be good at it in three years. And you get, get better. And it's fun. In writing, the same thing happens. So my now my books are better than 30 days. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah. Because I wrote half a million more words since then. So I, I become better. Uh, problem is right now that my new books are not selling so much. So I have to find again ways how to sell them. And I'm pretty happy that my old books from three, four years ago are selling now. Right, right. Yeah. And I think that's interesting because that goes right into my next question of that importance of positive habits and mindset in, in your work. And uh, how have these, I mean, you've kind of given us some examples uh, of how These have helped you in your writing journey. Is this, there's something in that that you can share with our audience that might help them with their writing journey? It's for the writing journey, but it's also for your life journey. So these yeah. mindset, mindset is super important and positive habits. If you create positive habits, it doesn't have to be 20 habits. It can be five to start with or three. This will build up over time into a great life. Mindset. Uh, how do I... Uh, yeah, approach my days. How do I deal with failure? How do I deal with self-doubt? How do I deal with criticism? How do I yeah. deal with what happens to me, right? This is also a big self right, right. thing. Right, yeah. right. Because things happen to you. Even to me, they happen. So I have my life pretty nice and good habits, habits and everything, but not everything is under your control. So what do? how do you react to the things that are not under control? And What do you do with them? What So life right. deals you some cards. How do you play them, right? Because there are, you have always two choices. You can you can give up or you can go on. Or when so for example, when you for example, many negative things happen in our lives, mm -hmm. and you can let those beat you, 
and give up. But you can also, when you, I will bet with you and everybody that listens to us, when you look back now at your life, the negative things that happened to you, I'm 100% sure you got something positive out of it. Yeah, there was something yeah. there. So, and, and I like the positive things, you know, it's not that I'm keen to have many negative experiences, right. but I have to say the things that it was clearly my negative experience that shaped me as a human being and as a person. And yeah. So and what tips really do you awesome. have for someone who is going through those negative experiences and facing that rejection and facing hard times? What, what advice do you have for a while they're in that? Very tough, but I can tell you what I did in that oh, time. So first of all, yeah. So first of all, you have to believe in yourself. I said that also in London, if you don't believe in yourself, you cannot um, expect anybody else to believe in you. In you. you know, mm, it's like yeah. you have to believe in yourself. On the other hand, if you believe in yourself, everything else doesn't matter. All the rejection that happens good. around you, if you believe in yourself, it doesn't matter. You have every now and then do a self-reflection so that you make sure you don't go in the wrong direction or you're not delusional for because that could happen. So I also do a check on myself every now and then. But yeah, at the end is that if you believe in yourself, everything else doesn't matter and you can make it possible. And uh, I mean, what shall I tell you? To me, everybody said, what is he doing now? Why doesn't he get a job? Because I said, I'm going to write a book now and then I'm going to get it up on Amazon and then I'm going to sell many books and make a life of it. I yeah, didn't know many great. things. I didn't know many things. I, for example, now I know one book will not make you rich, but five or 10 or 15 or 20 that's something else. So all the people, the six, seven figures authors I know, they have 30 plus books. Then what else did I want to say? Yeah, if there's something negative happening to you. So what I always did is, first of all, you probably have overcome many negative things before. So you, I told myself, well, I've made it through before, so I will make it through this time too. Yeah, oh, I like that. That's great. Another thing that helped me a lot is, was I thought, look, we are now we are six, Seven billion or whatever. And then back then, I, that we were six billion. And I thought, look, in the world right now, there are surely 500,000 people with the same problem like you. And they're, and they're moving on. They can deal with yeah. it. So I can deal with it too. Yeah, that's and, yeah, great. Those are that's great. those little tricks, you know, and it's really, yeah. And, yeah. and then all, and I knew because then you reflect of all the other crises you have been. Mm -hmm. Because this goes back 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years now, for example. And then you say, okay, this. And I may, I, maybe a good thing is I said that also in, in uh, London. So you, you make a timeline, right? You make a timeline. You take a piece of paper, take a timeline. And then you write down every negative situation you have had in your life. For example, I don't know. Girlfriend left me when I was 15. First, first big love. Father died when I was 18. Da, da, da. Then I was jobless. And then I was jobless again. And then on top of the line, so on, uh, below the line, you wrote, write all the negative things. That, and on top of the line, you write what good has come for you. So, okay, yeah, girlfriend, like left me, girlfriend left me. Well, now I have a fantastic partner, Natalia. Since eight years, fantastic. My she father is died. fantastic. I've yeah. met her. She's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, my <laughs> father died. What did I learn from it? Well, I appreciate life a lot more. You know, I, I, I knew the value of my life and I learned to, to live every day like it was my last one because you never know. Because yes. it could be your last one, you know. That doesn't mean when I was young, I thought that means to party hard and drink a lot. No, that doesn't mean that. It means say your sorries to who you have to say your sorry. Say your I love yous right away. Don't wait until tomorrow or two weeks. Call your mother now. Call your mother right, now right. and not in two weeks and things like that. That's what I mean. Uh, so that was that. And jobless, blessing. First time I was jobless. Afterwards, I, I I found a job in Barcelona. So I moved from Germany to Barcelona. I had wonderful 17 years in Barcelona. Second time I was jobless was nine years ago. And I became a writer. So fantastic. So and when you go like this, mm -hmm. whatever happens now, I know maybe I have, it takes me a year or two years to find out what is the good in the situation, but it will come. Yeah, so. I love that. I love that so much. And we have a question from our audience here from Santosh Mohite. I hope I said your name right. Um, 
says, just wanted to know at times we are getting information overload, be it self-help motivational books or podcasts and videos on habits, habit making, and then mine gets monotonous and sometimes cluttered up with which wants some clarity, how to get over such things. Absolutely. I have no idea. I mean, I turn off everything when it happens to me. So actually, you know, the thing with self-help is also we read a lot of self-help books, but as long as you don't do anything, you will never advance a lot. So reading is fantastic. But when you start taking off each self-help book, one thing and put it into action, that's when change starts. So I would rather read less. And when I read of every book, I always try to put at least one or two things of the book in, um, in question. And he is totally right that we are overcluttered. So you really have to choose what do I let into my mind and maybe even plan the information you get. And the overload comes, yeah, when you are overloaded and you definitely have to, to choose one yeah. thing and stay with this one thing, you know, and then... Because sometimes it's a mechanism of self-defense, you know, we, to, so that I don't have to put it in practice because it's incom uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. So instead of putting it into practice, I'd rather read three more self-help books so I can feel fine with myself because I read Ooh. three more books and listened to eight podcasts. But what have yeah, I actually great. done? What have I done? Have I written down my goals or am I writing down three goals things that I'm grateful for every day. And if I haven't done it, then it's better to write down my goals than to read another book. And I, I can tell you because it happened to me. Uh, I read, I'm sure, hundreds of self-help books or dozens at least. And we, you can see them in there from the 80s, 90s, and you can see everything is underlined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, so, I was so wise. I was a wisdom walking on two feet. But whenever you come to a part where it says, write down your goals, find out your values. It's all blank. I never did it. Wow. I never did the exercises. And that's why it's for me was so mind boggling when I was in my coaching training. And that's also why in my book, 30 days, I want to motivate people to do because doing changes everything. I love all that. the reading. Yeah. And so, so I hope I answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. I, question. I am so glad that this person asked because yeah. I'm like, whoa, mind blown. Um, I, definitely got so much from that. So thank you to both of you. Um, one of the things that I was wondering is you have balanced several, writing several books and managing coaching and consulting businesses. What are your strategies for juggling multiple commitments and responsibilities? Well, I have to say since five years, I only concentrate on, on selling books mostly. So I take one very, take on very, very, few coaching clients. I also didn't have a lot of speaking kicks because of COVID and also because mm -hmm. I'm not looking for them. And you have to look for them. Eh? They don't come, even if you have sold 800,000 books, they don't come running to you because there are oh, many. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And But the thing is, I concentrate on selling books because, and behind the strategy is the 80-20, the famous 80-20 rule. So, and now we come to the story in 2018, things were not going so well for me because I didn't get book back deals anymore. I was spending more money, but I was having less sales on Amazon. And actually, I thought I was earning 2,000 euros with my book a month, but I was actually burning $1,000 of my savings every month. So I looked at it closer. I, know, I noticed I have to do something. And then I looked, I applied the 80-20 rule on my business and that it says 20% of your product or of your, of your effort brings 80% of your income. Right. And, and I analyzed and it was exactly like this. 80% of my income came through books, book sales, all the other stuff was 20%. So I said, okay, I'm going to concentrate 80% of my time on selling more books and 20% and, and 80, yeah, and then the other stuff, the 20%. But so I, I found a lot of time by concentrating on only books instead of on everything and then mm -hmm. learning how to sell books. And then I started uh, studying authors who sell many books because one thing is many people say they sell many books, but later you look at their rankings and it lo doesn't look like they sell many books. So it's also, you know, when you go to YouTube, everybody is teaching you to how, how to make six figures with your books on Amazon. But Amazon themselves say that only 2,000 people in the whole wild world 
make six figures. Mm -hmm. So I had to really do a due diligence. I found there were a couple of good names. Uh, Steve Scott, I think was his name, SJ Scott, Mark Dawson, and some others. And they were really selling a lot. So I said, okay, I have to learn from them. And when I studied them, I found out uh, that authors who sell many books do lots of advertising and write many books, like 30, 30 plus books. So then I noticed, okay, I have to just learn advertising. And so from doing everything all the time, I concentrated on doing on those 20% that bring 80% of my income. And it's still like that. So right now, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So book, I think book sales even now bring 85% of my income. So I'm just concentrating on that and not on yeah. because it would be a, a waste of time to spend time on the other right. activities that only bring 15% of my yes. sales. Yeah. And yeah, that's a great everyone, Yeah. And everyone who can, so I see this 80, 20 everywhere and I would challenge everybody who listens to us to look at their business or their thing at their books. I mean, 20% of my books make 80% of my income. So even the books, right. so I have, I have, I think I have 50 products with eBooks and paperback books and eight books make most of my income. So 42 wow. books are not making a lot. So, so why? That's why I'm not so concentrating on them. I gave you, I have started with six bo books on Publish Drive. Those are my six books, six of the eight books who made more nice. money. Because that, was a, that was a smart yeah. choice of me because I said, why should I put all the other books there that don't sell? No, no, I put the books there that sell most and then we go from there and it looks yeah. okay. And, you know, That's great. That's a really yeah. great way of looking at it. So we have a question from our audience from Trafina Andrew. Again, I apologize if I messed up your name. Um, what do you do when you really don't have means to an end? Like you don't have any sort of income to do the goals you need to work on. Wow. Yeah, that's difficult. But also, you know, I don't know anymore. But, you know, I was jobless 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, OK, I, I had a light advantage because I had savings. And this is like. It started, I started saving in the good times. That's the, the thing. So I started saving 10% of my salary from 2006. Got fired in 2013. I had savings for two years of that. If you don't have any means, that's something that's still true because I didn't have many means. So for example, I, so you pay with time or with money. And sometimes it can be a, a very good, it can be an advantage to not have any means because you don't you don't spend money on wrong things and you don't fall for scammers. So many yeah. times I say, thank God I didn't have money by then because there are so many people making wrong promises, saying, pay me 4,000 euros and I write you the book and you will be famous and it's not happening. So that's one thing. Having no means, at least you can. It sounds terrible, but it's like that. Having no means, you're not in danger on, on spending money on scammers. Second mm -hmm. is what I said, you pay with time or you pay with money. So what I did, I researched with YouTube, you have everything. YouTube or on the mm -hmm. internet, you have everything. You can find everything. So you can find what is a perfect cover. You can find cheap editors. And so for me, it was okay. So I had to study so much and learn so much. So I got, I think I, I, 30 days started out on a budget of $200. I think I paid $20 for the covers, for four covers on Fiverr. And then one I chose, which actually cost only $5. Don't tell anyone because <laughs> I didn't change it since then because it works. So $5, $20. And then the formatting, I paid another $20 or $30 because I also found somebody who formats my books for $30 instead of... Because you can... The price goes up. You can find somebody who, who charges you $500 to format your book. I think Publish Drive has even free formatting tools, if I remember right. Yeah, we do. We do have a yeah. free formatting tool, yes. See? And then the, the rest of the money, I think like $130 or $140 went for the editor. Again, the editor, proofreader, I found on, oh God, up, Upwork it's called now, before it called Elance. And then I just wrote a text that said, I have a book with 40,000 40, words uh, looking for a proofreader. And then I got really, again, I got like 
20 offers from 50 euros to 5,000 euros. And then I chose based on price, of course, price and also like reviews of those and reading their samples. And then I decided for one girl and she made a gr did a great job. So, so I understand it is tough when you don't have means, but there's always a way. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that so much. And for example, uh, even more, I give you more because now, because if the person really has no means, you can still write your book. And for example, Mark Dawson has a foundation, SPF foundation, and once a year you can apply there. And if your book is good enough, they will give you all the courses of Mark Dawson, which I promote heavily because the, uh, everything I have is also thanks to the teaching of Mark Dawson. And second, you will get $2,500 on Reedsy, which you can use for cover design. So wow. if you have no means, you can at least try this. You know, you need one thing right. is that we talk about attitude. So I have no means. So I can sit down and say, I have no means. Okay. Everything is shit. I won't do anything. Or I can, if I have time, at least one hour a day or something, I can use this time to search stuff like that. Um, right. Scholarships, Free advice. YouTube is full of free advice. And not all is bad. A lot of good advice. Then there's the page Kindle Brenner. Kindle Brenner, who Dave Chesson also, everything you need to know about self-publishing is for free on Dave Chesson's page. Yeah, yeah. Lots of great stuff. And of course, we have a wonderful free blog on Publish Drive that you has a lot of really good advice. You, do the, you do, do the webinars. You have to go for these things. That's what I did when I had mm -hmm. nothing, I went for those things. Look, sometimes, surely every now and then somebody does an online writing thing for free. That's how you start. Yeah, you absolutely, absolutely. And um, I was going to ask next if you had any tips for new authors on how to effectively market their books and create a compelling personal brand. And it's funny because we just had a very similar question in the audience from one of our members, Fouad Sabri. Uh, again, I'm, hopefully I got your name right there. Uh, um, but he would love to hear more about your marketing strategy as well. Advertising, simply advertising. In my case, it's Amazon advertising, which works very very well for me. Now I'm going into Facebook advertising with Publish Drive. I'm trying to catch every promo because you have the, the great tab where we can apply for promos. That's the thing, you need to learn advertising. We are really living in a time and you won't, you might not want to like it. And I think in Publish Drive, you can also do Amazon ads for $5 a day or something for as low as $5 a day. So we're living in a time without advertising. It's going to be very, very, very difficult to sell books. Some people are doing it without money on TikTok, but I don't know. Yeah. Some, yeah. So for me, the easiest was advertising on Amazon. And that's it. And you have to learn it. And um, it's something... So I know a lot of authors who make six and seven figures and they are all doing their own ads. They, they all learn to do their ads because many people, many writers don't want to do their ads. I just want to write. The others have to take care of the rest. And I have to tell you, if all the best-selling authors I know, including me, uh, do their own ads or learn ads, put some time mm -hmm. into it, there is something to it. And then... On a spiritual level, even, I would say, what message are you sending to the universe? So you want to make a lot of, you will want to send, sell lots of books, maybe lift off your books, but you don't want to spend one hour a day on learning how to sell yeah. books, on learning. So which message are you sending to the universe, to God or whatever? A shitty, you are sending a shitty message because you're sending the message, of course, I want all this, but I'm not willing to spend one hour a day on that. And that's, I mean, that's not a good message to send, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I really didn't think about that. You know, like if you're not willing to invest in yourself, why should anyone invest in you? Like that's fantastic. And so just for clarification, Foad came back and just said, so the most efficient way to market your eBooks is advertising on marketplaces such as Amazon, social media platforms such as Facebook. Is that correct? Exactly. So I don't have a lot of, uh, I have no zero experience with Facebook. I'm just starting, but Fa Amazon ads is going for me very well. And I started with five euros a day or so, you know, because it's that 
you start, you can, on Facebook, I know you can, with two or three euros. And then the thing is, if you could pay three euros and you sell, you sell a book and make five euros, then you have made two euros. So right. then you could say, okay, now I'm going to put four euros. And, and then you get six back. And with Amazon, what I saw in the beginning was really every euro I got in there, I got the double back. So I put two euros in there, four euros back. So then the question was not anymore, oh, advertising, does it work? And the question was, how can I give Amazon more money? Because obviously, if I give them 500 euros, a thousand come back. So maybe if, give, if I give them 5,000, 10,000 come back. And it was like this for a long time. So, and I'm, what I hear from other authors who do Facebook ads, I hear the same stories. <clears throat> Yeah, I love that. That is really, really good advice. I very much appreciate that. What is the one piece of advice you would give to emerging authors for aiming for success in their writing career? It's more than one. Okay. I, I want to hear it all. Give it all. Okay, so the first one is don't give up. Don't give up. You don't know where you are. I wish I would have this, this, uh, this slide here now that I put up in London where I put my journey off. And you see oh, a flat yes. line. You see a flat line for five years, and then bam, it takes off. And then, and I said, you don't know where you are. Where are you? Are you in the beginning of the flat line, or are you just before taking off? And I didn't want to to risk it to 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 stop now, you know. So yeah. one thing is, don't give up. Believe in yourself. We are already said it. Believe in yourself. Learn advertising. And write many books. It's not yeah. one book. Or, so I think it's more 30 books. So I think when you, if you have five or six books, you can start looking at nice numbers with advertising. And then the more books you have, the better it gets. And, and you don't have to write third. So for me, it's like I have 13 books. And then I have the translations. I have a couple of box sets, a couple of workbooks. So... But books, books, I think when you have four or five titles, it starts moving. And then if you get them translated, maybe like this, you, you create traction. Yeah, and it's a yeah. long term, a long term project. Don't, you know, it's not the 30 days, although my book is called 30 days, but that's a marketing title, but it's not the short thing. It's really long term thinking. So for me, it was so I started in 2014. And really, 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 really good life and good sales and everything started at the end of 2019. So it was more than five years I was struggling. <coughs> and many authors I talk to have the same story. So it's very, it's not very often that you, with your first book you take off. Or, or I know one guy that for a long time with one book made a very good living. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's a unicorn. And I also I always yeah, tell yeah, him, I'm I like, you're a unicorn, yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, so Fouad had a follow-up question uh, about the ads. Just said, thanks, Mark, for your kind advice. Do you have a recommended ebook to learn how to make ads on Amazon or maybe a recommended course or any free materials? I know the course is from Mark Dawson. I mm -hmm. totally always um, stand behind it because that's the course that changed my life. Uh, I was not selling yes. a lot. I was making a $1,000 a month and then I made this course, I followed it to the leather. That's important. And I applied everything I learned. Here. That's another thing because many people have made a course and have not seen success, but I applied and then I 20 X my, um, my sales. So that's the course. And then there are eBooks. Janet Margo is an expert, expert on Amazon ads and Ricardo Fayette from Rizzi also wrote a great book on Amazon ads. I really have to say. So those two, and there's another guy, but I don't remember his name yet, but it's a black cover. This It's also a good book for Amazon ads. And then it's, again, learning by doing, because all the ads are different for right. author for a book. Right, right. Mohammed asked um, if you could repeat the course names again. Um, they So it's Mark Dawson's Ads for Authors. Mark Dawson, Ads for Authors. And then it, the books are Janet Margo, Janet Margo, Amazon ads. I think if you put that in, you will find it. And Ricardo Fayette has also a book on Amazon ads. Okay, yeah. And um, the, the audience asked for the list. I, I'll see what I can do about getting you a list for that. Um, 
later. Uh, we'll post that in our group. So um, be on the lookout for that. So my next question, and it's funny because we've had a couple of members also discuss this. Um, I wanted to ask you, you shared a fantastic testimonial for Publish Drive earlier this year. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you, um, how Publish Drive has worked for you and been successful for you? Um, Lucy Liu, one of our audience members said, thank you, Mark, for all the insights heading over to Amazon to study you. Curious at what point of your writing journey did you start to publish on Publish Drive? And what are the best features you like about Publish Drive? So I started last year after Amazon accidentally closed my account, which was hell. It was hell. It was a bot and it was closed. And then I decided to go wide because uh, I was exclusive with Amazon for all that time. But then I said, oops, that was like a warning shot. Everything is fine. And I get along very well with the people from Amazon now. But it was just a shock. And I said, okay, the money I make by being exclusive with Amazon for nonfiction authors it's not as much as for fiction authors. So uh, I just took them all away and I took them to Publish Drive because I knew Kinga, the CEO. And of course, it's also because I'm in Budapest, where, or I was in Budapest, where the, where the company is. So I feel a little bit connected already. And then, of course, it's really very nicely made. What, what took me also, what got me was the, the promo, the promo. Uh, possibilities, which for me is the most important thing. So I'm really aware that I have to do promos. And for if I can, um, I don't have, because that was one of the things that I also found out of the authors that sell many books. So 99 cents promos, even free promos or 50% off books. I get, I do every one I get because it doesn't hurt me because if you have 30 books, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you have one book or two books and you give one away for 99 cents, that can be a little bit hurtful but when you have so many books it doesn't matter and it actually brings in more readers so that was one of the things that i really and there are so many things i didn't try yet at publish drive like i think you have a cover generator you have the the free formatting thing i don't have the audio books i still have in other places but all in all if i would start now i would probably uh, just go via you yeah, everything. well, thank you. Yeah. We really we really love that. And Fouad had a very nice comment here as well. In my opinion, Publish Drive has the most advanced algorithm to catch errors. So I can say loud and clear that Publish Drive has the best quality insurance and assurance team when it comes to publishing books. So thank you both of you for such um, really nice things to say. Uh, we really, really appreciate hearing that. Um, so lastly, before we close, because we are getting ready to end our time together. Um, can you tell us about your current project? What are you working on now? And for those who have enjoyed hearing from you, can you share some information on how they can find out more information about you and your books? Yeah, so I'm actually working on one book right now, on a money book, but already since a lot of time and I'm not very disciplined with it because that's, that's something uh, that nobody ever tells us what comes with success in my case, I got a little bit more lazy, a little bit more self-complacent, lack of discipline, lack of hunger. And I know like, well, it doesn't matter. You know, every day the money comes in. So one book more or one book less, who cares? But I now set a deadline for the end of August for me. And I think that will be not a problem. I'm over half done already. So then this book will come out. I don't have a title yet again, but I'll figure one out. Uh, and that's the project I'm working on right now. All the rest is managing and administrating. So I'm still one hour a day with my ads and just looking for improvements. Now, for example, I have to do some editorial reviews, change some book descriptions, mm -hmm. thinking about if I will change some covers, but, that, but that's it. And find me, you can find me everywhere because there's literally only one Mark Recklau with a C, where the Mark is with a C in the world. There's another nice. one with a K. Yeah, there's another one with a K. And if you went to Google 11 years ago, we both showed up with 10 search results. But now only I show up, unfortunately, for him. Or So, yeah, you put my name into Google. I'm there. You, I'm as Mark Recklow on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, 
My favorite uh, way of communication is email, actually. I'm okay. old school. I'm that old school. So mark at markreckler.com is my email. And I, I'm proud to say I answer every email. Every, oh, every I love email, that. Except if they are rude or if they ask me for money, then I might not. <laughs> I might not. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. policy. Yeah. That's a good policy. So you, you've mentioned all of your books. Which one should we start with? I, I know oh, I'm I eager know. to dig in. Where where should we start? Oh, I don't know. It's like asking me which is your favorite child, child right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Children, I so I don't know. So 30 Days is a very uh, general book about self-help. It's like the, I'm sure. So yeah, one guy of my, one of my friends said, yeah, it's like an entry drug. So you read that book and then you want more and more. Okay. Uh, I have a book what, which is I love a lot and it's called Love Yourself First, which is about self-esteem. And I think a lot of the troubles in the world is because people don't love themselves. Maybe even they hate themselves. And if you hate mm -hmm. yourself, you probably hate everybody else around you also. So, But if you love yourself, you see the good in every people. And that was like a hard project and it's, it's very successful in Spain and South America. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so it's my best-selling book right now. And I think it's just a nice book to teach us that we should have be our best friend. And it's Ooh, not yeah, arrogance yeah. when you love yourself. Uh, but if you love yourself, you can actually bring a lot, lot of good into the world. So that's one, also one of my favorite books. And then I have one about purpose and one about human relationships, which is also important. So, yeah, you just dig in. There's yeah, something yeah. for everyone there. there. There definitely is. There definitely is. Uh, so we have a couple of more questions from the audience. One is from Mohammed Al-Rabi. Uh, Mark, do you use the paid promotion sections in Publish Drive? And if yes, please tell us your secret sauce on how you do it. Example, oh, yeah. Amazon, advanced promotions, etc. Sometimes I look at it all the time, but I didn't look for some time. But when I use it, it's very easy. I just have to put the name of my book in there and that's it but the thing is that many times it's also i have to say for fiction only or romance so then i can't join so but i'm i'm having all yeah. this i open but usually that when i had the experience for me was i just had to put in the formula in the form mm -hmm. my name and the, and the book and that's it so yeah yeah we try to make it very simple um dunia vargas says could i see this webinar again please tell me where yes we will be posting replays, so watch out oh, for our um, our social media and emails. We will be sharing all of that information there. We also will be having another session with Mark uh, later tonight, which is 10 p.m. Central European time. That would be uh, so, so fun. Yeah, I want to so, see the yeah. both. I want to see both sessions next to each other because now look at how vibrant I am. <laughs> yes. Let's see. If I can right, keep it up right. at 10 o'clock also. Yeah, yeah. You'll see me sleepy, but you'll see me more energetic and you'll see him sleepy. So it will be a lot of fun. So please join us later if you can. Um, Mohammed does have another question. Um, I think this might be a little more technical, but we'll see if you want to give a stab at it. Um, ask what budget do you set it on and it became a successful formula i'm assuming oh. that changes day to day mohammed yeah mohammed so i have to tell you so i did ads for five years i started very small with five or ten campaigns on amazon in my high times i had a, a thousand two hundred campaigns on amazon and now wow. i have 200 or so so then this is a huge we could talk an, an hour about it and then with the budget it's also it's something i did from my own logic. So I set a budget of a thousand euros per day, which Amazon never ever spent because my my click, uh, I set maybe at 40, 50 cent. And it's very risky because if you do it wrong, they maybe they take all your money. So you have to know your ads exactly. So after a while, when I saw that Amazon never spends all my budget and I had a good campaign running, I put it at on a thousand just to show, to say, Amazon, look, the money is here. Bring me all the clicks you can. But that's really something, yeah, you have to yeah. find out over time. You need a lot of experience. If you put your, put this now, you said, let's say 200, and you put a click on one euro, which is crazy. You shouldn't put a click on one euro. My maximum is 50 cents, and I have a lot of history, a lot of experience with my ads. 
but you could lose a lot of money. So I am, I rather tell you to build small campaigns and then start, start yeah. upping it with time. Yeah, so I like that one more lot. thing. Yeah, one more thing. So I was doing, for, I was doing Amazon ads for 17 months, 17 months, every day, an hour to go from a thousand two hundred dollars to twenty thousand dollars. It didn't happen from today to tomorrow. It was 17 months. And I think that's a good approach. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Thank you. I know that that's a very complicated topic. And uh, my familiarity with Amazon ads is that it changes so constantly. You really Again, have to watch it. Yeah. So um, I, I really appreciate you giving us a little bit of feedback on that as well. So thank you so much for joining us now. Thank you to all of our audience who has been here with us this morning. Like I said, we will be doing it again later today. So if you want to come back and chat some more or um, just want to get some additional wisdom, it will be similar. But as you saw, we had some interaction from the audience and uh, we'll see what happens later today. So thank you all. Thank you, Mark. And um, we will talk to you all soon. Um, for joining tonight's webinar, if you go to our Facebook page, there will be links there as well. Um, we have the links and uh, so you can see them uh, from there. So thank you everyone. And thank like you. I said, thank we'll you. talk it to you great. again very, very soon. And it was great, the interaction was great. Thanks for making so many questions. I hope I could answer them all more or less. And it was great fun as I suspected. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely.